<laughs> what we say about extent in space, we can also say about duration in time. Mr. Zeus may be imagined as an immortal, though he was once born. All that means is that the world will be burdened with him, the consummate politician, as long as there is a world for him to knock around in. Mr. Zeus is not eternal. Which do we suppose is really closer to eternity? A year, even a millennium, or an instant? If we finite creatures who float upon the river of time cannot imagine what it is to be beyond time in that heaven for which the flow of the river is as a single present moment, so too we cannot imagine what it is to be fully within a single instant of time, an instant without dimension, within whose present are contained the potentialities of all times. God dwells in inaccessible light, and the eternal and the instant are alike inaccessible to us. Dark with excess of bright, as Milton says of God. The praise of the angels within the smallest of the seeds resounds, not just in immense space, but, says Chesterton, filling all eternity. The immensity of God the Creator was enclosed within the womb of Mary, even within a single cell. In the Paradiso, Dante's first vision of God, and I suppose if you've never read any medieval literature, you figure that he's going to imagine him as an old man with a white beard, <laughs> as a Christian Mr. Zeus. His first vision of God is of an insuperably dazzling point of light. Not an orb, but a point. So small, he says, that the smallest star in our heavens would seem like a moon by comparison. We should not simply say that God appears to Dante as a point, because Dante is far away. The point has no dimension. Zeus would grow bigger the closer you drew to him. That is because Zeus is merely and trivially big, while God is the one for whom the whole universe is as a point, and a single created point of space is room enough for him, so also this single instant of time. In what analogous and small event is enclosed the eternity of God the Redeemer? So, consider a moment that is as small in time as a seed, the mustard seed, is small in space. Consider something tinier than the mustard seed, an impulse of the human heart, an act of the will that is touched by the silent and invisible dew of God's grace. So the scene is Calvary, and you know immediately what I'm going to talk about. There are two men crucified beside Jesus. They've been mocking him. Why not? Everybody else is. If you are the Son of God, they cry, save yourselves and us. Come down on that cross. They were from southeastern New England. <laughs> they seek some act of obvious grandeur and power. They would be pleased by a triumphal parade with the victorious general leading the slave-driving Romans in chains through the gates of Jerusalem. They want 20 more years, or 30, or 40, of debauchery, highway robbery, assassination, treachery, and all the other pleasures of the adventurous life. They want more of the same old, big, empty things they have known for so long. They want long life and not eternal life. Just as a merchant wants gold, and a politician wants power, and a soldier wants glory, and a lawyer wants fees. <laughs> they want a big house for a long time. They do not want the kingdom of God forever. Well, what happens then? We are not told. One of the mockers rebukes the other. Something happens, and one of the mockers rebukes the other. Something must have turned in his heart before then. These were wicked men who deserved their punishment. What was it? An impulse of the heart. The smallest and most secret response to the call of God, like a, the glint of a spiritual firefly, private, hardly understood by the very man who experiences it. Uh, turn of a key in a lock, the lift of one feather, 
the twinkling of an eye. We shall all be changed, says St. Paul, thinking of the resurrection, in the twinkling of an eye. That wonderful momentary glimmer of affection and humility and delight, something happens. 